friends, welcome to yet another edition of Shantiniketan Literature Festival's online mode. Today, our MC is Monika Ajay Kaul. She was there with us in the physical meet as well. And she knows you know, the perfect Shantiniketan style in which we work. So Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's an exaggeration. <laughs> or uh, I'll just tell you a little about Shantiniketan Literature Festival because every day new set of people come, though I may sound repetitive, but since every day a new set of people come, so I can at the risk of being repetitive tell you again. So the whole idea was started or rather began when Anumita Chatterjee Roy, Anumita Roy rather, she suggested that we can meet this year at Shantiniketan. Initially we thought a poet friends in Kolkata and some of us and nearby Johe, Pandra B Slok, just we, we'll get together and have a little betaki kind of a thing. You know, we'll go around Shantiniketan, we'll uh, visit places, we'll discuss, and that's just a very small kind of a thing. So when I started doing a research, to my dismay, I found there's nothing called Shantiniketan Literature Festival or Literary Festival, you know. These days, uh, Monica is, uh, teaches management, so she will tell us more about branding and all that. So, you know, we need branding. Branding is a lot of support. So there is no branding of Shantiniketan, no branding of Tagore. I'm not saying that they are not doing anything. They are doing splendid work, but that name Shantiniketan Literature Festival or Shantiniketan Literary Festival wasn't there. So first thing first, I talked with my CA, I talked with the lawyer, and we moved the trademark registration thing. So we already have two trademarks with us, Different Truths, which is the official host of Shanting in the Literature Festival. We got it. That was the first trademark we got. The next was Kavikum Publishing Consultant, KKPC. Kavikum, when just before uh, COVID-1, you know, we, we had planned a huge program. Monica and Lovita and quite a few of you had decided to come and join us there. And uh, I, I arranged something with the uh, Allahabad Museum. You know, they were the official host also, co-host. But because of this uh, uh, COVID thing, everything came to a screeching halt. And we had to, we could not meet at all. Because then there were COVIDs and COVIDs and various rounds of COVIDs, right? So, uh, and we suddenly found that here comes an opportunity of doing it. So, we started the process and uh, outstation delegates and some local people, people from Vishwabharati, local people from other places, Ancholic poets means people who are regional poets. We have various dialects of all languages, like Hindi has Braj Bhasha, Magai, Audi. So Bangla also has various, you know, dialects. So the, there were these poets from these various Ancholic Bhashas. We had four poets from there. And there was one, one Santhal poet, Santhal poet. Other than that, we had a Manipuri poet. So we had nice Ancholic session also in the meet. Uh, another highlight was we had uh, Dr. Rita Day. She's a retired principal. She has been a part of the underground poetry movement. And it's a poetry movement, which is uh, that of the marginal people. You see, Chasha Bhusho Der Kobita, as they say in Bangla, right? the tiller and the farmer, uh, the cobbler and the janitor, unke poems ko leke in loo kaam kar rahe. So this was a, another very interesting aspect. Other than Tagore, you know, who was at one end of the spectrum, we had this underground poetry movement's representation at the other end of the spectrum. We had Mandakini. It was a melange of ideologies and uh, yeah. cultures. Yeah, yeah. And, and other than that, we had Mandakini Bhattacharya, who was telling us about the marginal and Dalit poetry, Dalit literature. 
So it was a very interesting thing that we had. Uh, we intend to carry carry forward this entire program time and again. And it is my ardent wish that all of you are online. At least some of you, please become a part of the physical meet. The reason being that as Monica would agree, you know, online bahut acha lagta hai. technology, you are wherever you are at the comfort of your home, aap aajate, hum log baat kar lete. but what we cannot do is we cannot carry memories back. Right. There's no friendship bond that happens. Jo actual physical meet me hota hai, bhale wo do din ka ho, teen din ka ho, you know, you meet and you sort of, you are 24 by 7 there with, with these people, two, three days. So, usse ek bahut acha wrap up banta hai. But having said that, I would also like to add that हम लोग का theme रहा है SLF का and that theme is Ranga Mati. Ranga, as our Bengali friends would know, means red and Mati is Mitti, the red earth. So उस अंचल उस a region की जो earth है soil है that is red earth. So the baseline explains we called it the red earth dialogue. So the red earth dialogue thing is still continuing, and it was a part of the Red Earth Dialogue that we had to stall our online meet by a week after the Calcutta brutality that came to our light. So having said that, let us begin our program. I'll ask uh, Monica, who is our MC this evening, to open this event with a session rather, with a Ravindra Shangit. She'll sing a stanza each in Bangla and in Hindi. And then she will take up introducing each one of you. Amita, since you are from the round two, so don't be sort of surprised that if you if you are you know introducing the second round, not the first round, because we will we'll start introducing those who are reading the paper, right? So having said that, Monica, over to you. Thank you, Arindra. A very good evening to all our esteemed guests, respected delegates, writers, poets, and scholars. Um, in continuation of our previous online Shanti Niketan literature first erudition sessions, it is with great honor and joy that we welcome you to this gathering. This is all dedicated to the timeless legacy of Rabindrada. I'll just start uh, with a song, which is from Abhiman. And I'll just sing a Bengali as well as Hindi version of the song. But I don't know how much justice I would be able to do with it. But still, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Jodi tari nam chini go siti Shinky, 
Excellent rendition. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Thank you. I would all of you know already that uh, in the film world, in the film Bollywood, as well as Tollywood, which is the Bengali film industry, uh, we have been we have used Ravindra Sangeet many a times directly, and quite a few times uh, there were songs which were inspired by some song or the other of Tagore. Mm -hmm. Needless to add that Tagore himself wrote these songs inspired by various traditions, whether it was the Scottish tradition, whether the Baul, whether it was the Bhatiali songs, you know, whether it was the classical <laughs> bass, the, the myriad kind of influences on Tagore and the legacy continues. So thank you. And uh, you can introduce our next guest, uh, the person who will be reading the paper, begin from there. Thank you, Monica. So, as we are uh, today, uh, we unite across distances to delve into the profound beauty and wisdom of Tagore's work, an eternal source of inspiring of hearts and minds alike. His philosophy embodied in his poetry, prose, and thoughts, it, it, it transcends boundaries and speaks to the universal human experience um, as we explore his themes of love, freedom, as you all are going to do that, and nature and human spirit. We are privileged to share this platform with such distinguished voices. And we trust that today's discussions will not only celebrate Tagore's contributions, but also spark new interpretations and insights for all of us. Um, so let's come together in the true spirit of Tagore's ideals, promoting creativity, harmony, and unity. We wish you a deeply enriching experience. So a warm welcome to our chief guest for tonight, uh, Ms. Amita Sangvi. Uh, she will be reading the poem and she has a book release. Our guests of honor, Lovita J.R. Mora. She'll be she will be presenting uh, a paper. She'll read a poem, and of course, uh, she's a flautist. We won't leave her without a flute on um, a flute recitation on Rabindranath Sangeet. So, and another guests of honor, Nandita De Chatterjee. She will um, go through paper presentation, poem, Sarvani Chakraborty. And she will recite a poem. And Dr. Sharda Gupta, uh, she's going with the uh, paper presentation, poetry, song on uh, Rabindra Sangeet. And not to forget our esteemed host, Arindam Da and uh, Anumita Roy. 
So before starting, I'll just give a brief outline of the program. Round one is the paper presentation. So the chief guest will get 15 minutes and for the rest of the uh, delegates, they have 10 minutes to go through the presentation and poetry presentation, it's two minutes. And uh, round three is the book launch and round four, of course, is the fun, <laughs> fun round. So I'll go with the songs and instrumental music, of course. So uh, let's start uh, straight away with Lavita J.R. Moran. She's a guest of honor. Um, she's an artist, poet, writer, researcher, filmmaker, discovery of rhododendron forest, Eastern Himalaya film, and book is a green Oscar entrant. Wow. Lavita has represented in international and national science film festivals. She has made more than 20 documentary films. Wow. And has 30 books, anthologies of short stories and poetries, honored with Karamvit Chakra Award by United Nations. So over to Lovita. Please, Lovita. Over to you. You're not able to hear you. Lovita. Lovita, unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Should I start with the flute? Yeah, you know, you start with the paper. Flute, flute and the poetry? No, first the paper, no, uh, then the poetry, and last round one. Round one is paper presentation. So, so you can oh, start with paper presentation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening to all the authors, poets, delegates of Shanti Niketa Literary Festival. And it's an honor that I have been honored with this love as guest of honor for this prestigious event. And uh, I would like to, first as your protocol, uh, uh, I would start with my paper presentation. It's all about Tagore, the Nobel laureate, Rabindranath Tagore's love for Northeast India and Northeast India, Northeast India's people's love for Tagore. We from Northeast India has eight states like Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura, Sikkim, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Assam. So I'm based in Guwahati from the land of Red River and Blue, uh, Blue Hills, mighty Brahmaputra is here. So I would like my paper presentation is, uh, I have done an, uh, I won't say extensive, but passionate research on Tagore's presence in Northeast. So uh, I have re already written Tagore's love. Letters from Shillong, Kublai Shivun. Tagore in love. Tagore in love with what? Yes, poetry, of course, but most importantly, the place. Shillong, Northeast, Assam. Tripura. So let me start with what I wrote, Tagore in Love. It was in the month of May, Lovita was in Shillong with a soul sojourn to be there with Tagore who lived for 999, but now 100 years ago. First time in 1919, he was in Shillong. She walked, Lovita walked the Eka, Beka, winding roads of Laitumukra, then walk up Hill Laban. The pine trees are still there, tall, but older. Under whose shades walk the poet laureate? She documents Bart journey, his stay, clicking pictures. So it was in the month of April, Tagore arrived in Shillong. And fell in love, he fell in love with the place, he stayed there throughout May and June. And here I want to add a line from Tagore. Once we dreamt that we were strangers, once we dreamt that we were strangers, we 
wake up to find. We wake up to find that we were dear to each other. That's written by Rabindranath Tagore. And as you know, so through Eka Beka Rose of Light to Mukara, Aphil Laban, the poet laureate was here writing his last poetry, Shesher Kobita. So likewise, and uh, magic is right here. He left magic here. Such is the creator of the elegant prose and magical poetry who we lovingly address Guru Dev, right? So, so first time, first time he was uh, Rabindranath Tagore, the laureate, Nobel laureate was in Shillong on 11th October 1999. He stayed here for 21 days. He lived in a house named Brookside, surrounded by pine and deodha trees. This is a good news, but the bad news. The news that's not so good is that the house where Tagore lived has been dismantled by people who are not aware of his presence here, who lived here. I am here trying to express my love for Tagore. I'm saying I wrote already in love with Tagore, uh, Tagore in love with Shillong, but people here unknowingly or unintentionally, I don't know, but they broke, dismantled the house. So it's no more there. Uh, Brookside. Then when Tagore was here in Shillong, he fell in love with Shillong. He, he felt the breath of fresh air here. He found his much needed solace. He loved the comforts of confinement. Tagore loved the comforts of confinement. The only place he would go to pray in Shillong was Brahmo Samaj. Maybe the disturbances caused by the Nation by Rollet Act where Britishers introduced to restrict every protesting Indian. 22nd December 1918, the foundation stone of Vishwa Bharti was laid. An untiring effort to glorify Shanti Niketan, a citadel of knowledge and culture. He even became the teacher himself to inculcate the wisdom in pupils. He introduced Guru Shishya Parampara. And if I may add here, Rabindranath Tagore uh, came to Tripura. Tripura Tagore visited Tripura seven times and was very close to Tripura's royal family. The royal family entertained him with Manipuri dance. Tagore was so enchanted by the dance that he took a Manipuri dance teacher, Nava Kumar Singha, to Santi Niketan to acquaint his students with Manipuri culture and help them to learn the dance form. That was a significant event for the Santi Niketan. Prabhat Kumar Mukhopadhyay, Mukhopadhyay in the third part of Rabindra Jayanti said, because the singha's presence, the dance form in Santi Niketan took a new form. Tagore also visited Cotton College here in Guwahati. And the uh, uh, so like, uh, I would also like to connect Tagore to the literary giant of Assam, Lakshminath Besbarwa the beautiful marital connection. This marital connection was like, uh, has some socio-cultural literary significance also. Tagore was married to Rabindranath Tagore's niece, Lakshminath Desburva, the joint of Asmi's uh, uh, Saitarati, he's called Saitarati the joint of architect of modern literature of Assam, Assam Lakshminath Besberwa. He got married to Lakshmin, uh, Rabindranath Tagore's niece, Praigya Sundari Devi. And also I would like to say, like Rabindranath's favorite book, uh, a Flower Was Rhododendron, which I'm working on. Rabindranath Tagore would have been happy it's, we have discovered 100 species of rhododendron in the last frontier of India. So he wrote a, a line, poetry on rhododendron. Rhododendron ucho sakhae, death highest. And I am also working on it to 
make it declare the last frontier of India's original forest as world biodiversity heritage site. The fight is still on. That's what Rabindranath Tagore has inspired me to work on him also. I have written a long uh, write-up on him, but it's very difficult to, you know, uh, uh, read it out now. But uh, I'm trying to... I'm trying to uh, again uh, read more from his life. Rabindranath Tagore, when he came to Shil uh, Shillong in 1919, he wrote in Bengali. More no 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 Means in English, if I may translate. Let me not pray to be sheltered from dangers, but be fearless in facing them. Likewise, uh, I've uh, taken out lots of points from, uh, it's already, already on uh, Google, but uh, I think I should end my, But there's lo lots of things to be read, ag uh, read again. So how Tregor traveled in rugged terrain. In 1919, can you beat this? How Tregor traveled in the rugged terrain from Guwahati to Shillong? The distance from Guwahati to Shillong is 100 kilometers. How the uh, mystic man, the laureate traveled? It remains a mystery. But magic in his walk proved that Tagore was a risk-taking, headstrong, adventurous poet too. The poet who traveled 30 countries on five continents, yet he loved his love for the land is different. He fell in love at first sight. Shillong ought to be the shibboleth, a slogan of souls. While soul searching poetry and stories, soul studying, Tagore generally, uh, he traveled from Guwahati in private vehicle. In his memoirs, described winding road to Shillong as he himself wrote, Eka Beka Poth means winding road to reach Shillong from Guwahati. So there was deep forest, dense fog on either side of the road. He, Ravindranath Tagore, celebrated each turn of the mountain road. There was almost no road, breathing deeply the aromatic emancipation, emanating out from the pine trees, charmed by the union of wildflowers, evergreen khasi hills, yet he finds his favorite climate indicator wildflower, Rhododendron in Shillong. And he wrote, Rhododendron Utsa Sakai, poetry with scientific intervention. Rhododendrons are climate indicator wildflower. Today we are facing 40 degree in Guwahati. Heat wave is on. See, he put identify the importance of flower then. Rhododendrons are climate indicator wildflower. So uh, nevertheless, the poet laureate in his later life developed interest and passion that expanded to science. Nobel laureate Tagore was even, he expanded, developed his interest for science, right? Sci uh, interest and passion for science. He is meeting with Albert Einstein uh, as solicited in Vishwa Parichay. His collection of essays, his respect for scientific laws and exploration of biology, physics, and astronomy inform his poetry, which exhibited extensive naturalism and verisimilitude. He wove the process of science, the narratives of scientists, into stories in Se, Teen Songhi, and Kalpa Salpa, 1941. The Eternal Tourist. Uh, Tagore was called Eternal Traveler, so, amplified his words in Shilonger Chiti, letters from Shilong. Gormi Jokon, Tutlo Na Ar Pakar Hawao Sorbote, Tanda Hote Dware Elam, Elam Shilong Namak Porbote. Means when Rabindranath Tagore came to Shillong for the first time in 1919 without any formal invitation. Look at this. He never had ego. He came to Shillong with no formal invitation, though he was already a global celebrity. By then, he was not only Robi Babu of Bengal, but also famous Nobel laureate uh, Rabindranath Tagore. And his second visit in 1923, a perfect uh, vacation, summer vacation, 
with bitter experience of mechanical lifestyle and pattern grip of capitalist society. In his more than a year long voyage to Europe and America, he depicted the side effect of modern mechanical life in his drama, Red Oleander, means Dr. Korobi written in Chit Bhumi in Shillong. So these are solo, so in Shillong and city it's all there. And he was so disturbed by the capitalist greed and climate condition, which still we are facing after 100 years. So I think I would like to end my research, passionately done research right up here. Thank you, Lovita. <laughs> Thank A you. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. And Thank you. you have given us an insight uh, of you know the two-way road, how Rabindranath loved uh, Northeast and vice versa, uh, Tripura's Raj Poribar, the kind of uh, link that they had. And since he was a naturalist, he was a nature poet, you know, you have talked about uh, the wildflower, Rorindoron, and how that is a climate indicator. Also, Rock the Korobi. And uh, if, you, if you remember, Monica, we had a, a three, initially we had three venues. One of us, Rock the Korobi. Uh, one was Polash and uh, uh, one was Aparajita at uh, at uh, Shantini even this year. So anyway, so it was wonderful. Uh, over to you. Thank you. Take it from here. Thank you so much, Lavita. That was a refreshing, uh, those were the refreshing anecdotes. Actually, I uh, believe that Rabindrada had a profound love for different places and cultures, which is evident in his extensive travels and writings. Um, I, uh, I think his global perspective allowed him to blend Eastern and uh, Western ideas. So let's move on to our next um, guest of honor, Nandita De Chatterjee. Um, Nandita De is a writer, freelance journalist, a book editor, formerly with Economic Times, published in Statesman, Illustrated Weekly, ET, um, Telegraph, ET is Economic Times, Telegraph, Times of India, Germany Today, VWM, UK Setu, New York Parrot, etc. She co-authored 82 anthologies, eight coffee table books, edited seven books and two journals. That is incredible. Uh, she has been a community ambassador, communication projects, and senior reporter, GPLT. Uh, she has received many literary peace awards and three peace ambassador awards. So first of all, in the first round, she'll be presenting um, uh, a paper on Rabindra Das uh, Supervisualism. Over to you, Nandita. Thank you so much. Hello, hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here at this this evening at the Shanti Niketan Literary Festival, which I think is a landmark effort. Mm. I'll read my paper now. I won't take any extra time. My paper is titled Destiny's Children. No amount of eulogies can completely describe Romindo Nath Tego's genius. No amount of critical analysis can substantially uncover the depths of his work. In my talk today, I will briefly touch on a couple of aspects mostly left undiscussed. I wish to present some posers which arose in my musings. Like most of us, I was raised amidst Robindo Shongit and Robindo Nitto despite growing up in a remote Air Force station. This was entirely due to the efforts of my mom, who was the secretary of the ladies club, and the then president, another Air Force wife, who had studied in Shantiniketa. They organized dances, dance dramas, and soirees, where the ladies and children participated. A persistent image of my mom is her with her harmonium, with 
the thick welcome gitobita non top she had his song lyrics on her lips till almost 94 despite some memory loss help by my request to alexa for debugrut bishash and suchitra mitros playlist to return to my topic i was keen to acquaint myself with the go spiritual quest gitanjali versus magnum opus and every indian treasure the ghost persona has enthralled bengalis and others for over a century the mind behind the genius has been studied at infinite it was his soul search which i wished to explore i was particularly mystified by the times in which he lived and worked for this was the period of shri ram krishna paramhansa the mystic who has left a profound effect on the world of religion and religious pursuit it was a time of ram krishna and vivekananda and sister nivedita i was mystified did ram krishna and tagore ever meet did tagore and swami ji's paths ever cross two of bengal's greatest figures with a staggering influence over the people then and even a hundred years later undiminished and the world over the beginning of the ram krishna order the onset of everything rabindra it was a time of bengal's greatest vidyashagor keshav chandra sen girish chandra bosh bankim chandra chattopadhyay acharya jagdish chandra bose acharya prafulla chandra roy bishu kobi robindrana thakur as he was called in bengali believed deeply in humanism and naturalism his spiritual ecstasies were expressed expressed soulfully in gitanjali in 1910 besides his poems and songs are replete with the metaphors and motifs of spiritual quest and search for divinity in nature and the self despite belonging to the aristocracy his short stories speak of the humble experiences and simple people whom he could empathize with he explored the entire gamut of emotions present in man and nature seasons and the life cycle with mysticism and lyrical splendor but with the sincere honesty and insight of a seer he was only four or five when shri ram krishna visited his father maharshi devendranath tagore's house on hearing of his devout leanness but shri ram krishna was disappointed and saddened by devendranath's vanity Years later Tagore did meet Paramhansa at Nandanbagan in 1883 at Kashiwar Mitra's house where Sri Ram Krishna came to attend a Brahmo meet celebration Tagore was then 22 he remembered the memory till he was sufficiently old at the time however he was dismissive of any great impact Much later in 1931 when he was 70 he wrote to Tristuk Mukhopadhyay on September 11 1931 I don't have any doubt in my mind regarding the depth of his spiritual sadhana amidst the powerful bhakti that he has generated all over the country exists his greatness with proof and his contribution established forever in 1937 shri ram krishna's birth centenary celebrations were held at the university institute hall with a parliament of religions from march 1 to 8 the nobel laureate was requested to preside over one of the 14 meets he agreed finally after setting many conditions on the day March third. However, it took Tagore half an hour to read his paper. 
it was a brilliant paper. Over 1,500 people listened to his talk in pinlock silence and 25,000 people in loudspeakers outside. Tagore was very pleased. Later, he told the arcane moms, never in my life have I experienced such a calm and quiet meeting with so many people present in it. Wonderful. Instead of leaving immediately, as he had said he would, he stayed for three hours with a physician on standby, as he was not too well. The next day, he told Swami Sambudananda, the convener of the celebration committee, great souls like Ramakrishna Paramhansa have a comprehensive vision of truth. They have the power to grasp the significance of each different form of reality that is one in all. Gurudev may have met Swamiji once at the initiative of Sri Nividita. Nividita had organized a tea party at her Bospara house where she had invited the Swami and some prominent Calcutans and Brahmos, including Rabindranath. This is perhaps the only recorded meeting of the two. Nividita sensed a certain tension between them at that meeting. Another meeting later has not been fully confirmed. However, Swamiji's influence was not lost on him. He said once, if you want to know India, study Vivekananda. In him, there is everything positive and nothing negative. A spiritual symbiosis may have been possible, but it was not destined. Destiny had other plans for the titans of that era. Tagore hailed Sister Nivedita as Lok Mata, mother of the masses, and wrote of her profound nobility. Sister was also the first translator of three of his short stories and influenced the idealistic ending of his novel, Kora. He had met her many times and he had witnessed her spiritual side in Bodh Gaya and been greatly moved. But sister had firmly refused his offers earlier to teach his daughter. Another hypothesis I have is that Tagore wrote Gitanjali in Bengali at 49 and it was a seminal work. We are aware of the adage that change is a constant. Progress is kinetic. But at a much older age, if the polymath had written a sequel to his songs of offerings, what fresh realizations and regrets would he have expressed? Why did such a prolific writer not document his inner journey in full maturity? Was it a conscious decision to keep his final spiritual yearnings private? Maybe he internalized the changes or kept something back for his own self. Don't we all? Thank you. Excellent, Nondita. A wonderful paper presentation. Uh, we got to know many rare things. The interaction between Paramancha and Tagore. Also, his interaction with Sister Nivedita. Thank you very much. Over to you, Monica. Thank you so much, Andita. That was a erudite uh, study. Um, I recently came across a research paper, uh, um, and I came to know that Rabindranath Tagore spiritualism was deeply rooted in the Upanishadic philosophy of unity. So um, I guess uh, Tagore's spiritual vision emphasized inner freedom, love, and the pursuit of truth, uh, which he actually expressed in so many essays and poetry and, and what to say, what not. Um, his, uh, he had a you know, deep reverence for this life's beauty, transcendence, and the interconnected interconnectedness to the, you know, uh, all beings, basically. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nandita. 
And uh, next we have, uh, and next we have uh, Sarvani Chakraborty, another guest of honor. So Sarvani Chakraborty has a master's degree in both English and business, administ uh, business administration. <laughs> Welcome to the group. <laughs> After having worked in different corporate sectors, she migrated uh, to the academic field and has been in the teaching profession for more than a decade. She has worked as an English language teacher in a bilingual school in Jewish, Switzerland, and is currently working as a senior faculty member in a reputed school in Calcutta. She is an avid reader, model, wow, podcaster, independent researcher, motivational speaker, published author and poet, blogger and blog trotter. Uh, in round one, she'll read an imaginary letter penned by Charulata from Amal titled Of Broken Dreams and Fulfillment, the Chronicles of Charulata. Uh, it's based on Tagore's Nostonir. Uh, the letter will present Charulata's altered life view and her coming of age. So over to you, Sharbani, please. Thank you so much. As uh, Pam has already introduced what the paper is going to be all about, am I audible? Clear enough? Yes. Thank you. So, Amrit to Kolpuna Puri. Dhorini ji amra, চারুলতার সাথে দাঁড়িয়ে আছে হয়তো তার বারান্দায় বা হয়তো তার বসার ঘরে ভূপতি চলে গেছে দক্ষিণে কর্মসূত্রে অমল তারও অনেক আগে চারুলতা বিশাল বাড়িতে একা এবং সাথী সে ইংরেজি শিখেছে তার অফুরন্ত সময়ের চর্চার মাধ্যমে সে ইংরেজিতে এখন মোটামুটি সাবলী একদিন বিকেলে এলোমেলো চিন্তা করতে করতে হঠাৎ তার ইচ্ছে করলো অমলকে একটা চিঠি লিখতে না এই চিঠিটা সে বাংলায় নয় ইংরেজিতে লিখবে বলে ঠিক করলো চিঠির নামকরণ করলো অফ ব্রোকেন ড্রিমস অ্যান্ড ফুলফিলমেন্ট চারুলতার চিঠি ডিয়ার অমল আই ইউ আনকমফর্টেবল উইথ মাই টার্ম অফ এনজিওরমেন্ট Afraid of censor? How eager you had been to clarify with my husband whether he held a grudge against you. Grudge? Why should there be a grudge? Reading poetry together and the endless conversations? Do you tell me that you did not hold them close to your heart? Heart. Yes, I talk of the heart. I have more courage than most men. My husband has traveled to the South. What about his love for journalism? I think he simply ran away because he could not take his world falling apart. It is difficult to live with broken dreams. My dreams, where are they now? What about the garden, the lake and the blue lotuses? I hold on to them and the tender emotions that I am not ashamed of. Why should I be? Affections are not for us to decide. Fondness is not vagary of the heart. Since when did striking a chord become a matter of disapproval? I did not blush when I stitched the carpet slippers for you, though it left me with blisters on my fingers. Did not hide them away either. There was no guilt. Then how did she make an appearance between us? Are you scared? Because you care about propriety, the appropriateness imposed by conventions. A man and a woman cannot be friends. They must either be bound by relationship of blood or marriage. If not, they are capricious. I can be wanton and unafraid, both at the same time. Or is it because you took my suggestion of getting married too seriously? Then you are no different than most men who look for happiness more than love. The sheer predictability of life de devoid of tumultuous emotions. I thought poets did a better job at that. 
So you must be a pragmatic poet. And that is why you decided to run away just like your brother, both unsettled by the unpredictable and unexpected. Too scared to con confront life's truth. Both of you are hiding, not from me, not from anyone, but from yourselves. I am still in my Kolkata home. Home, that is a strange word for a woman who has neither husband nor children. I sit in the balcony, wrapped in the warmth of your voice, your verses echoing in my heart. In the darkness of the night, I see your moon. Your moon lights the path which leads to the temple in my village, which I have left years ago. I sit there, bearing my soul, folding my hands in a prayer, wishing for a different kind of life. What kind of life? I do not know. Monda has left. She is the Ardhangini, the better half of a man with whom she shares a simple relationship, an uncomplicated re relationship embellished with wifely sense of duties. A mind devoid of reflections is a peaceful mind. Sometimes I envy Monda, envy her for a simple equation with life, the simple chores and the peaceful sleep. I sleep very badly these days, even inside the embroidered mosquito net that I have made for myself, exactly the way you had asked for. I have removed the second pillow. It takes up unnecessary space and restricts my movements. I have been crammed for far too long. I will embroider one more for you. Your mosquito net will sport the lake, the bridge and the blue lotuses that we had wanted to have in our garden. Our shared memories will stay safely locked in my cupboard till you claim it to release yourself from the prison of the net and walk away into the freedom of the vast expanse of the pristine. You can decide how many pillows you want to have on the bed with the canopy of the mos mosquito net sheltering you. I sit alone under the plum tree. It is peaceful to sit all by myself without the excitement of waiting for your arrival. There are no palpitations, no storms rage in my heart anymore. I recollect, think, write. There are so many thoughts which walk in my heart. I write my story and our story, the honest stories, undiluted and uninhabited. I have not yet thought about publishing them, but may do so someday. You may consider this a scandalous proposition. But I have told you, women are braver in matters of heart. My heart brims with love. I am finally in love with life. Do I still cry for you? No, not anymore. You have been my alchemist. I have finally come of age. Yours always, Bota. Thank you. Excellent love letter. And uh, the both the story and the film, which is open-ended, you have given it a wonderful sort of uh, extension. Um. I loved it, loved it very much. Kubishundu, Kubishundu. And very powerful. Uh, yeah. Here we see Charudasa, you know, come out as a very strong and a bold woman, which she was. And you have played on that. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Monica. Thank you, Sharwani. That was a profound, very, very beautiful, very beautiful indeed storytelling. And uh, it reminded me of uh, Tagore's Nanal's letters. So very beautiful. Um, our next uh, guest of honor is uh, Dr. Shraddha Gupta. Um, Dr. Shraddha Gupta is an assistant professor in Department of English, RMP PG College, Sitapur, associated to University of Lucknow. Her uh, research areas are post-colonial studies, gender studies, and new literature. Her research articles are published in UGC Care Listed and Peer Reviewed Journal. She is a bilingual writer. 
Shraddha is her, Shraddha S. Sahu is her pen name. And uh, her writings are published in many national and international e-magazines and anthologies, including Muse India, Love and Longing by Kavya Kun, Publishing Consultants of K in, uh, KKPC, Atunis uh, Poetry, and Rhetorica Quarterly and Spill Words. Um, again, she'll be you know, going through a paper Voicing Rebellion Against Patriarchy, a study of Rabindranath Tagore's short story, Wife's Letter. Minal's letters you're talking about, Shraddha. Over to you, Shraddha. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, first of all, I'm very thankful to Arindan Roy, sir, for inviting me to here on this virtual platform. And uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to attend Shanti, Liter Shanti Niketan Literary, Literary Festival. So here I would like to present my paper. First of all, uh, I would like to appreciate the paper and uh, the you know poem that was uh, recited by Sarbani ma'am. It was so wonderful. And again, this paper, this uh, is uh, about the analysis of Mrinal's letter. And that is, the, is taken from the story Istir Patro, the Bengali title of that uh, story. So Ravindranath Tagore, he was a myriad-minded personality. He was the first Indian to receive the prestigious Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913 for his exquisite collection of Song Gitanjali. So he had the name before him. He twisted a hierarchy created by age-old traditions. Rabindranath Tagore, in his writing career, he had written almost 92 short stories. And Tagore would say about the short stories as Chota Pran or Choti Vyatha. And uh, Rabindranath Tagore, in his writing career, brilliantly portrayed the female characters who were rooted in typical Bengali household. Tagore's Chokher Bali, on the one hand, peeps into the dark chamber of the widow who craves for satisfaction of her physical and intellectual desires, while in punishment, the protagonist Chandra shields herself through unforgiving silence. He could meticulously capture the vivacity of Mini in Kabuliwala, the subtleness of female consciousness in Charulata in Broken Nest, Mrin Moi, the unyielding stubborn behavior in the ending, or boldness of Kalyani in the stranger. So it, when we talk about Istir Patra or wife's letter, it was written by Tagore in epistolary style. So Tagore, he was a visionary. He was the first one to speak uh, about the women's question in literary circle, whereas Global North at that time was engaged in acknowledging females' presence in socio-political and cultural milieu. Tagore decided to voice the muted experience of women in his writings. So. His female characters, though confined in the household, are still radical in their consciousness. Uh, so when we talk about this Istir Patro or um, Renal's letter, we find that while letter, she writes a letter to her husband. So it is a way to probe into the psyche of a woman. The letter reveals the psyche of a woman. So, here it reveals that, or just suppose that if he, she had not written this letter to her husband, we would never have come across the inner workings of her mind. She is bestowed with beauty and sharp intellect. She writes this letter to her husband and ironically the letter begins with submission to the lotus feet. The letter reveals that 15 years long conjugal relationship had not any congeniality. The letter serves as a realization of Renal, where she critiques the role of women in the patriarchal society with the clarification that the letter is not from the second uh, daughter-in-law, the major bow, but a woman is speaking for her and many like her who have been othered by the patriarchy. Renal is educated and has an agency to speak not only for her, her not only for herself but also for other women who are illiterate and subjugated by the multiple or they are oppressed if Mrinal is compared to her sister-in-law she is privileged as she is bestowed by alluring beauty 
Renal's family had all hopes on her striking beauty, but she was still diffident as other marriageable girls were their close inspection by the grooms and his relatives. She is diminished to an object of scrutiny. That generally happens when we go for the marriage proposals and we find that women we don't see women as an individual but rather we see her as an object of scrutiny so she is diminished to an object of scrutiny whose value is to be fixed after that Renal's beauty was also prized and then only she became the part of the groom's family a woman's worth in a household relies on the role she plays in order to appease her family members her place is confined to the household and she is expected to devote herself to those chores only none expects her trespassing into the matter of brain so it comes when it comes to intellectual beauty in case of a woman it was treated as a taboo she was clever to decode the gender politics that denied any agency to women especially the women like her sister in law and the female and her female relative bindu so she never as far as her sister in law is concerned she never complains and in order to secure the place in the family she herself act as a supporter to injustice in the name of patriarchy Uh, Renal's letter to her husband from Puri voices the suppressed anger and protest that she had for the discriminatory behavior of his family for all the women including her. The ill treatment of Bindu gives air to Renal's rebellion against the patriarchal norms. She shields Bindu against all odds and that she opposes her husband too she has a motherly affection for bindu bindu was the relative of her elder sister in law and she was poor so she was not getting that kind of treatment but rather she was exploited by the family members and even the family member they decided in order to get rid of bindu they decided to get her married as early as possible and the person whom she was married she he was mad and later on when she comes to comes back you know that after facing a lot of episodes of domestic violence when she comes back to the family they deny to keep her back okay and it is a uh, you know mranal who takes her this action that she would save bindu and she decides to take her to puri and she takes the permission from her husband that is it was a pilgrimage and she can go there and she readily gets it so it was her brother who gives her a letter that bindu she had committed suicide so bindu who couldn't speak in her life for herself it was her death that raises a pertinent question and another thing that i find in this particular story that it it has a kind of you know we find that mrinal she does not only stand for bindu but she has also she also cared for some mute animals like lamb or cows etc and uh, one more thing that i compare it uh, to henry kipson's doll's house as uh, it was uh, a very radical text when it came in 1879 when nora she slams the door everybody criticized that why nora slams the door and here uh, in wife's letter in nisteer patro rabindranath tagore presents a heroine that she writes a letter and there she mentions that she is not coming back she is not the major bow that means she declines all kind of uh, essentialism that is attached with the identity of women okay so she asserts her own identity she declines to live in that uh, uh, place where she was married and she is helpless or she you know she wants to be a part of the universe the entire universe so i'm just reading out it uh, you know that uh, like her other revolutionary heroine of tagore mrinal too seeks emancipation through education her letter shakes the root of socio cultural structure of her society mrinal's letter to her husband unearth the stifling silence of a confined woman and those shackles of socio cultural essentialism prevalent in patriarchal bengali bhadra lok 
community of that time. Mrinal not only questions the beauty standards that commodify a woman to an object but also raises her voice against the submissiveness of women, the objectification of women and more to the non-consensual marriages. Mrinal crusades a war against the hypercritical patrilineal society. Thank you so much. Excellent, Shraddha. Very layered paper. And uh, other than the Sri Patro that mm -hmm. we have talked about, it's of course a very, very uh, deeply discussed uh, short story of uh, Tagore. Here we see Tagore's uh, very sensitive handling, his understanding. His understanding is psychoanalytical aspects of relationship also. You know, yes, sir. He, he, you, you feel as if He's a psychiatrist, he's a psychoanalyst who understands women so well, you know, the, the inner working of the mind, the heart and mind, and how uh, within the limited confines also, Nrinal finds a way to protest and put a foot down. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Thanks. Monica. You, you need to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Could you not unmute, unmute yourself? Okay, yeah, yeah, please continue. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just Thank you so much, Shraddha. Uh, of course, um, Renal's letters are such a evocative read, and it's very powerful, very powerful. Um, I uh, believe that Renal's awakening leads her to reject the submission, uh, the submissive uh, life expected of her. And um, you know, asserting her independence uh, and choosing self-respect uh, over societal uh, norms. I think she symbolizes women's empowerment. And uh, uh, let's start with our uh, next round. That is our poetry round. And uh, I straight away would go, would would love to go to our next chief guest and. Amita Sangvi. Amita Sangvi. Amita Sangvi is a renowned lecturer and poet, representing Oman as both an ambassador of Canada and Italy. She has authored six poetry books and edited two anthologies, and has won numerous international awards, including the Emil Care. Sol Ferrini International Literary Competition and the prestigious jury award at Il Melito di Guido Gazzano. I hope I pronounced it right. Sangvi has published her poetry in various countries and is set to present her research at the University of Minister uh, Rochester. And uh, she will recite a poem, Memories of Reading Tagore. And it's a tribute to Tagore. Over to you, Amita. Thank you so much. It has been an absolutely enriching evening, listening to in-depth analysis and insights. And all that I've read of Tagore comes back crowding in the mind. And I feel so nostalgic about not being in India. Lovely, what a lovely, lovely crowd we have today and beautiful, beautiful words of literature. Uh, when uh, Arindamji said we are having this Tagore anthology, are you sending a poem? I was very honored that he thought I was uh, good enough to write and thank you, thank you so much even for this online platform, because unfortunately I couldn't come to Calcutta, though I had signed up for the entire event. 
Uh, my poetry just came when I thought of Tagore and I call it Memories of Reading Tagore. Memories jumble up from the English literature classes, reading Tagore's short stories to reciting Gitanjali in bed. I remember I internalized each and every year in the school assembly prayer where the mind is without fear. Tagore's vision to me remains dear. Clearly debating Gora, I remember, or analyzing Charu. As an NRI, I'm nostalgic rereading Homecoming. Tago truly shapes my being. In the worst suffocating moments of feeling betrayed and let down, reaching Tagore again, I always found my feeble voice growing stronger as I sang Jodita Reduction Koina Shet Abe Akla Chalo Re. Tagore forever in my breath. I find him in my soul's depth. He holds my space and his unique artworks all my frowns erase. From pain intense, I feel grace immense. Between his art and poetry, I swing and sway. His wisdom and light each time bring me solace. As I revisit my Tagore shelf, I immerse in his wisdom and emerge a balanced eye. Intellect and heart at peace, I feel nurtured and nourished as I sing or recite. His eternal presence I feel. After every fall, I higher rise. Thank you. An excellent poem, Amita. Over to you, Monica. Lovely it was poem. such a beautiful poem, Amita. And uh, I would uh, love to invite Lovita for her poetry reading. And uh, I think her poetry is about, just a moment. Um, uh, the title of her poem is Ten Shades of Earth, Dirt, Nishidopali. Right, Lovita? Yes, Nishiddha Polli. Yeah, okay. Lovita. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Lovita. Unmute. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Audible now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again. So I was like so engrossed listening to beautiful poetry and stories about Tagore. And the that's why I say Tagore in us is alive. Tagore is alive in us, in you, in me. So my poetry goes as because everything about Santi Niketan Tagore is Kolkata. So I thought, and I being a believer of Durga Shakti, Durga Ma Durga, so I have written the, uh, the Shakti, the strength of women I see I could relate to in Ma Durga. So that's why I have written this poetry, Ten Shades of Earth, Dirt, Nishiddopali, right? In ten shades of earth, dirt, why we cannot be the ten-handed goddess of warrior? Who will become the priest, potter, idol maker? When demonic forces enter the dharma of deeds, screams of victory of good over evilly. Every priest and idol makers back for land from her promising promised land. Where will my potter seek punyamati? Do time play a drama? 
knocking at the doorstep of wooden and unfinished heaven. I mean to say wooden and unfinished heavens are brutal. Faces of both hypocrisy and society be born into in search of energy potency driven. That's her unfinished heaven. Hide to seek a handful of fire and force of fortitude, fortunes from promised land of Nishidopolis. To create a new ten shades of warrior goddess and might for fatal fight to and evilly. Mahisasur is at hominem, name of displaced divinity, placed in the tales of yore and not yet a myth of malign and hackle pester that plague dignity. Secret, secret out of houses with red doors. That's brutal. In districts of Kumartoli, clad in sacred earth's body, my potter is a poet's idol maker. To make her warrior goddess the invincible one, fierce form of warring Mahisashura Mardini, buffalo demon slayer. My potter need to knead mud from the banks of Ganges, Bostorus urine and dung and half of earth from Nishidopali. The sacred idol of Goddess Durga is ready to fight filth in my potter's land, Kumartoli, narrating, rhyming, naming, clad the earthy idols of gods and goddesses and the society all out of Nishidopali. Ten shades of earth, dirt each out into 108 names like Skandamata, Kushmanda, Sailaputri, Kalratri, Mamacharini, Chandaghanta, and Siddhidatri. Still, still mages, still born. Forlorn, my potter's warrior goddess finds no nameplate, not even no home on earth. Still are called sluts in best of their slangs, dates and Jezebel. Yet quietly, my potter's warrior goddess attains self-sacrificing solemnity. Chakra of chakra view battling spins the wheels of auspicious time. Astami's hunger for auspiciousity. Uh, Rages of fatal fights, screams of victory of good over evil for every right. Can't shed its shell. Bell rings, all powerful throw. Her tan hands become the sharp edges of scimitar. Shield, trident, bow, and arrow. Her warrior goddess, his warrior goddess, the potter's warrior goddess, Mounts on lion body, force withering winds of fortress of fate, invincible and beyond rich, demon slaying goddess Mahishasura in the form and difficulties of strategy, war dance of warrior goddess in quiet ecstasy. Amblicated Navratri narrating demon killing women are worshipped as goddess. Women are worshipped as goddess. Yet it's showy, it's hypocrisy. My potter is an idol maker, made this warrior goddess a love mark, emboldened mark of respect to those women downtrodden, humiliated by earth's dirt of society, you and me, makeover humor of loudest war. In the musicality of the Shera Vijay Dasami, fireworks of victory immersed into the womb of Brahmaputra, mighty river. Warrior goddesses, melting bodies merge into the body of ten shades of earth, dirt of the Shittopali. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent poem. Excellent, lovely poem. And a firebrand poem. Thank you, Lovita. Over to you, Monica. Thank you so much, Lavita. That was a powerful, evocative poem, I must tell you. And uh, over to you, Nandita. Um, I think you'll be reciting a poem that is titled Dancing Dolls. 
September 21 being the International Peace Day, you'll be talking about Manipur, right? Over to you, Nandita. Hello again. Today is the International Day of Peace. And for some years now, I've been participating in this event internationally. So this year, I'm with you all. And I wish to pray for peace in the world, which is very disrupted at the moment. And I wish to pray for peace in Manipur, which is a festering wound in our homeland. I hope peace and safety and equality returns to the world once more. You have the poem, please. Thank you. Thank you. The Dancing Dolls, Manipur, 1892, 2024, then and now. A sage, a poet, a visionary, in his mind's eyes, envisioned Manipur, rolling in mists and mountains, its beauteous maidens, petite and nubile, Twirling and pirouetting in entrancing silken skirts with cancans. Gossamer veils flowing from tiaras, blushing to Arjun's peerless charms. The ghost's timeless songs serenading the sunsets. A story so ageless is appeal unveiling. Chitrangada's magic overpowering Mahabharat's iconic hero. Be dazzled, besotted, soon be wedded. Dawn still breaks on Manipur mountains, but the nights are as fearsome as the days. Veils replace songs. Warring factions have seized all courtships. Love stories ousted by hate. No superheroes or princesses who fascinate, whom poet laureates immortalize. Ordinary mortals fighting for survival. <coughs> One day's news in crumpled newspapers. Burned to a cinder with their homes. Natives in arms, law and order surrendered. Army rule. Families asunder, Manipur birds. Lovely lasses and lads, men to love, live, and bestow grace. Battle worn, scarred, bruised, fighting for their lives, as does the man mountain valley itself. Even now, few keep track of burning Manipur. Around the world, the music is heard as Rabindranath's Chitrangada is enacted a millionth time over. The sage turns over in his grave. Thank you. Excellent poem. Thank you, Nandita. Over to you, Monica. Thank you so much, Nandita. That was a compelling piece of poetry. And now I would invite Sharwani uh, for the for her poetry, and um, she will read a poem uh, titled "The Bygones: An Ode to the Old Days and the People Lost." The poem is inspired by Tagore's Purano Shedin Dinner Kotha. Explore it explores the powerful emotions evoked by visiting one's old house of Perseus highlighting the impact of memories of lost people and incidents over time. Over to you, Sharwadi. Thank you. Purano shei diner katha, ghulbi kire hai, o shei chokher dekha praner katha, sheki bhola jai. My poem is all about nostalgia. The bygones, an ode, to the old days and the people lost. The grass greets me 
as I tread down the path that leads to the house that had once been mine. The silhouetted one stares out like a faded imprint on a dull paper, forgotten and lost in the crevices of time. It had once been bustling, now standing quiet. Like us, superimposed by the adult perception of irrelevance when utility has failed. The door, windows stare at me. They have been shut ever since the old world disappeared. I unlock the wooden door, ridden with termites, almost falling apart like some of our lives. Freaking for a replacement or retirement, pleading for something to give it a closure. The dirt-stained fingers with a baton struggle to clear the cobwebs. My hands, like a conductor's, perform the antics, the inaudible opera unfolding. The floor impregnated with wood rings, announcing the arrival of a life in silence. The yellow walls are no longer yellow. They are of a color that I do not know. This life is unknown to me. The furniture looks familiar. The tables have been sat at. The chairs have been occupied. The mirrors have been looked into. These are old friends waiting in anticipation. The stainless steel plates are stained from being unused. Some of them have been left behind, misfits in the new world. The bucket still has some water, too slimy to be used even in the bathroom, where it stands in the corner, reflecting on its uselessness. The bed where my father slept his pillow, the easy chair for a siesta, narrate a childhood tale to warm my heart. My hand downwards traces the designs, the silence tunes, the note still a diminuendo. I see his shirt hanging from the peg, threadbare and beautiful. He never bought a new one for himself. It was small for his size, I always thought, realizing now that it can embrace me, the whole of me, the bigger I have grown. The bag with smuggled goodies, much to my mother's annoyance, for being indulgent and wasteful, peeps from behind the door ajar. Hide and seek, hide and seek, my hand upwards, the tune in crescendo, I touch them. The pillow, the shirt, the bag, smile at me, tease me, beckon me. I touch them, caress them, they breathe life into me. In them I seek solace and find you. Thank you. What a beautiful poem. What a powerful, beautiful poem. And of course, as we all know, Purono Shei Dune Diner Kotha, Purane Dinoki Bate. You know, can you forget that? No, we can't. We can't. And uh, uh, of course, this should be talked about at a different place, but just a line. Uh, I was involved in a anthropological research uh, with Dalit Center at Allahabad, and we were talking about migration, right? So there we found that the migrants who have moved, you know, hundreds of years ago, maybe, the way they hold on to their uh, place of birth, a belonging, is through memories, right? As you rightly said, Purano Dinar Kotha. They carry it. And of course, things, when they go back, there have been uh, recorded history where they were absolutely shattered when what they thought the life was isn't anymore, right? So things change. But yeah, a beautiful poem. And you remember your father and his things and connected with him. Wow, beautiful. Uh, over to you, Monica. Uh, may I just share one thought 
please yeah uh, yeah in the when you spoke about this you know the subaltern population relocation and how they try to hold on i was reminded of hashuli bakir upokatha kibhabe kahar der puro mane change hoye gelo that was like very powerful novel so apni jokhon ota bollen that is what really came to my mind thank you thank wonderful you. wonderful yes thank you so much sharwani uh, that i could relate to the poem because i too live with this uh, exile consciousness you can uh, talk about i will add just three lines to it um, the walls remember the laughter long forgotten footsteps fade like murmurs in the dust yet the air still holds the weight of what once was uh, thank you sharwani and now to shraddha Shraddha will recite a poem uh, in your embrace. Over to you, Shraddha. Thanks a lot, ma'am. So the title of my poem is "In Your Embrace." Uh, I wish brews in my heart, so pure, so innocent, to be with you ever in autumn and spring. My heart brims up with unreliability as I feel your presence gracing mine. This world is ignorant of what I behold. Beneath the clusters of myriad clouds, standing at time's golden threshold, I feel you with my eyes closed. Amidst the boughs, boughs laden with tender flowers and snowy lilies floating on the water. nestled in your divine embrace i breathe like a blooming bud of bliss in eden resplendent resplendent in your aura i travel in this world happily treading on the grass and the thorns inebriated with a draught of vintage wine i am dancing to the melody of sublime love thank you so much such a beautiful poem thank you sadda over to you monica now we can go to the third round and have a book launch amita has a book for us uh, amita i am at my daughter's place uh, i can i don't have a copy of the book here and of course you will to send it rather so you can hold it up the book and amita would talk to us for about 5 minutes of the book and then you know we can ask a question suggest whatever and in the 5 minutes and then we move to the last round yes monica Uh, thank you so much so my daughter this year graduated from high school and she went to the us to study and i was in us that's why i couldn't make it to calcutta one of the things i felt most difficult was letting her go as mothers we know how far us is and she is my only daughter so i struggled with the idea of living without her i still feel you know i wait for her subconsciously i don't start eating i feel she'll come downstairs it's so strong because it's just 3 weeks she has been gone when i thought deeply what should be her gift for the 18th birthday a major flying away from home i decided to pull out all the poems i had written all the stories i had told her over her childhood and i put them all together with her own illustrations in this book that i first time write children's poetry and maybe the last time because now she is too old so i've called it woodland whimsies children's poetry and i'll just read the blurb to give you all an idea meet naughty twin squirrels chango and mango and their friends goldina and silverina and the neighborhood banu and hoppy the bunnies hatu the baby elephant hanu honey bee and lilu the parrot enter a world of woodlands in this collection of hilarious poems for children with cute and colorful images that kids will love to go back to a great gift for making best bedtime reading memories of childhood 
and also initiating children to new poetry. I always feel that we do nursery rhymes, which are some, you know, which are good, which are done in school. But these are these are very Indian in the way I have named the characters and the stories uh, they tell. If it's okay, may I read a short poem? Please do, please do. On last Sunday, I found Changu the squirrel gazing at the sky with a thoughtful eye, as busy as ever, climbing very high. Mangu, his twin, was close by with a twinkle in his eye, bouncing around a furry heap, laughing louder with every leap. Changu counted each nut there. Mangu tumbled by without a care. He twirled and he spun, a whirlwind of fun, sending nuts flying up and down. Poor Changu collected them again, counting each nut one by one. Changu chuckled softly, shaking his head. Mangu, he sighed, you're such a whirlwind, sit quiet instead. But Mangu just grinned, his tail in a curl. Come on, Changu, let's dance and twirl. Changu stayed focused, steady and true, collecting nuts for the season through. While Mangu played with delight, Changu gathered nuts from morn to night. Changu cherished Mangu's infectious smile. The twins were different in style. With each day, Changu calmer grew. But Mango's mischief grew. So I've, <laughs> Lovely I've tried. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. I've tried to uh, keep stories in the poem. So there are many stories and anecdotes which are hilarious. I remember my daughter used to laugh and laugh, and she wouldn't let me stop. So. These are like all the poetry that I had for my kid. And because I knew she enjoyed them and she would end up making pictures. So the book has a lot of illustrations, uh, pictures made by her. Wow, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So yes, Amita, thank you very all, much. Yeah, we fall all fight with the emptiness syndrome. Been there, seen yes. that kind of a thing. And it becomes yes. all the more difficult when you are handling uh, all by yourself. So, you know, the challenges are still greater. But it's yeah. amazing with the great courage and fortitude that you have brought up your child. And uh, such a beautiful gift to yourself and to her at this vacant time where you've written this, got this poem published, where you can sit down and revisit the childhood once over again as she progresses in life. So if anybody has anything to comment or suggest or say or ask, please feel free. Is it, uh, is it just a collection of poems or do you also have some stories in between? No, it's just poetry, but it's a story poem. Like in one of the poems, uh, Changu tries to go on the top of the tree and pull the moon. So it's like, you know, how he ends up tumbling down. These were spontaneous stories I used to make for her at bedtime. And then I have just a uh, little bit edited and refined them into poems. It's all poems. Thank you. Uh, poems which are narrating different types of stories. <laughs> yes. They're so sweet. They're so Very cute. Sweet. And it is so endearing. I was totally charmed. Because I was also a bedtime storyteller of my child. And I also created characters and all. But I didn't make any book. This is a wonderful present. Could you ask him? Please do send us a link because we might want to buy it. Thank you so much. I would request if any one of you would like to review. I'm so keen that it be reviewed by such wonderful poets themselves. Such a lovely gesture. Thank you to your daughter. And the remembrances forever. Thank you. And as we uh, move towards the end, 
Um, I would love to invite uh, Arindam Rao for his group of class. And before that, I would just end up wrap up with three lines again. As words take shape, our stories unfold. From pages to hearts, we continue the journey. Let this festival spark a light that never fades. Over to you, Arindam Rao. Thank you, Monica. Uh, we we look forward to your book being reviewed and I'm uh, happy to say that if anyone of you wants to review it to different groups, please be my guest. Uh, now we come to the fourth round, Monica, where we can call people for the musical round, you know, beginning with Lovita's flute recitation. Yes, yes, to, of course. Yeah, yeah, we have a few people here. So let us hear them out. And then, of course, the... Uh, a ritualistic end to the program. Over to you, Monica. Over to you, Lavita. And My food is ready. So I'll be playing Ro Nobel Laureate Rabindranath Tagore's Ekla Cholore. In, uh, it is a uh, playing float Rabindranath uh, through my flute is not only playing the flute but it is my attempt to connect to you all saying that I love you all so Ekla Chalore if I may interpret I believe it is uh, not like Ekla Chalore tum Akela Chalo but the oneness of your love, strength, compassion, sympathy, empathy I think that all embodies into this uh, Rabindranath Tagore's uh, thought or uh, this wonderful thought and he wrote it Ekla Chalore. It's not Ekla Chalore means you walk alone, but with this oneness you walk, right? So that I would like to translate it into my flute. So, uh, it's an attempt. If uh, mistake ho jaye to maaf kar dijiega. Okay, here I go. Jodi tur dakshune e na tobe ekla cholore Lovita, the sound is not coming. Can you take help of a microphone? Lovita, sorry to interrupt. Lovita, sorry to interrupt. We can't hear a thing. Lovita, we can't hear a thing. Kya hua? Kuch sunai nahi pad raha hai. Aap, uh, aap aisa karo. Do you have a headphone with a microphone? If you use that, then we can be able to hear. Me paas aake... So yeah, you we couldn't hear a single note. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still not good, still not good. Sorry, Lovita, we could not hear because the computer audio could not pick up your flute strains. Very oh. sad. Uh, so, uh, 
बहुत जेंटल बट वाइल यू प्लेइंग ट्रायल वी कुड हियर यू आई एम आई एम सरप्राइज अरे कैसा हो सकता है ये wait, देखो ना कुछ नहीं सुनाई पड़ा आप अपना वो अभी एक बार ट्राई करो Can you hear me? No, no, no. We can't. Are? As a case, how does it sound? नो नो विदा पिच्चू छोड़ने जाते हैं ना सॉरी नेवर माइंड नेवर माइंड ठीक सॉरी आई एम सो सॉरी अच्छा मोनिका लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट पर्सन एंड व्हाट वी कैन डू लोविता नाउ नेक्स्ट टाइम व्हेन वी आर हैविंग दिस यू नो यू कैन हैव अ यूट्यूब रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ योर फ्लूट एंड यू कूड let us let us move on to others of course we we heard uh, strains of your uh, thing when when we were in trial just before we started we could hear you perfectly well i don't know what happens but technological glitches are strange kabhi kuch chalta hai kabhi nahi chalta hai hamara desh hai kya bata sakte hain so actually if i may lovita you have two connections on ha so if you switch off one I think okay. uh, you'll be able to connect uh, connect the sound better. I have stopped it. Oh yeah, should I try? One time, do one time. One time, na? Hmm, do. Ah, chalo. No luck. Yeah? No luck. No luck. नहीं सुनाई दे रहा है नहीं नहीं सुनाई दे रहा है अरे बासुरी को क्यों नहीं सुनेगा लेट मी क्विट दिस हाउ टू क्विट दिस नाउ द अदर वन और लीव लीव ओके आई एम लीविंग दिस कैंसिल लीव लीव मीटिंग ओके अभी यहां नो नो विदा नो लक हार्ड लक चलो आप हमें यूट्यूब में भेज देना वील शेयर इट ठीक है ओके मोनिका ओवर टू यू कैन यू हेयर मी आप अनम्यूट करिए अपने आप को नाउ आई कैन हेयर यू यस यस so as we conclude today's program it was really enriching experience no i think i think we have somebody left more uh shayad no, uh, aur koi nahi hai jisme gana vagera no. kuch ho just me no i think there is okay. shraddha ka kuch hai yes shraddha yes. ka you are missing out okay shraddha ko bhi kuch hai yeah okay yes yes she was going to yes yeah. right over to you shraddha <laughs> yeah yeah i'm so sorry Shadda. yeah yeah mujhe yaad aa gaya chalo Okay, sir. Actually, I want to say that since Bengali is not my mother tongue, but still, I may. I am just making understand. a humble effort. Totally effort understand. Totally to sing understand. the Bengali song. Your your attempt is yourself is beautiful. Koi fark nahi padta. Koi charan sahi nahi hai ya diction sahi nahi hai. But the very fact that you are attempting to sing is itself commendable. Please go ahead. Sir, wait a minute. Let me just have the. हमारो पर जा
beautiful rendition i would like to add something very interesting since yes. yesterday we have uh, had some bangla songs ravindra sangeet to be specific and these were all sung by non bengalis <laughs> you see this also tells the great impact that uh, ravindra thakur or tagore as we call him in english still has and in one of his poem uh, very well known poem aaj theke shoto borsho por for it you know 100 years from hence so it's it's almost 150 years later we are still you know singing his songs in his language yesterday we had shayali from maharashtra from pune and she sang beautiful bangla songs and uh, we also had divya venkateshwaran a tamilian you know in in bombay and when she sang there was not one error in a song you know she spoke she sang the song so beautifully that i was compelled to uh, uh, note yesterday that uh, she comes in the legacy of two other very famous tamilian singers right one was ms subalakshmi so you all can make a note of it uh, and she she had the great fortune she was a very young girl of singing a song in the presence of kavi guru right and he blessed her mm. and uh, uh, her most popular song she has sung quite a few the most popular song is mullika bone right so mullika is a flower uh, so she, she has sung that song we all know usha uttap she sings in various languages she has also sung in bangla a few rabindra songs as well and then yesterday we had a Today we had Monica Ajay call. We began the program with her. Here's a girl from Kashmir, okay, who was born in Bhutan there, but later shifted to Noida and now in Bombay, you know. And she sang uh, Bangla absolutely fine, like a Bengali, you know. She was so accurate. And uh, Shraddha, your pronunciation was was almost ninety eight point five percent accurate, you know. Exactly. So it was excellent. It was really, Thank you. Really Thank you. Thank you very sure. much. Over to you, Monica. So I would, at last, I would love to, you know, bring my heartfelt gratitude to each one of you. Just it was so heartwarming to hear you all. Thank you, Amrita. Thank you, Lavita, Nandita, Sharvani, Shraddha, and of course, Arindamda. You are always a pillar to us. And um, just to conclude, and uh, before signing off, again three lines: As words have flowed through these days, we leave with more questions than answers. But certain that the journey of stories. Poems will continue beyond this gathering. Over to you, Arindamda, for your word of thanks. And thank you, thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. Uh, I'll go to the formal word of thanks. I begin with thanking Onumita Roy, a festival director. I also thank Orunima Das. She's an associate festival director. She was a great help at Bolpur Shantini Ketan. uh i need to thank kishor bhattacharya ji who was again a strong pillar while we were at shanti niketan uh since it is a hybrid thing it's a continuation i thank uh without taking names you know each and every participant who has participated in slfs whichever mode online or offline thanks go to each one of them uh i thank onumita she has been a constant source of support and all the beautiful 
you know, uh, things that you get, your, your certificates, your uh, flyers, even the backdrop that were designed there, which some of you saw, you know, were all done by her. Uh, and even the cover of the anthology, which is awaited, which we will be publishing in the month of December. One quick thing that uh, some of you have registered very late and we could not, because I was under pressure and there was a bit of ill health also. So I might not have been able to tell you to fulfill the uh, anthology uh, rich, you know, formalities. If I have forgotten, please ping me. I'll inform you what needs to be done. So, you know, so um, uh, let's carry it forward. And uh, now... Where do you put a book? Anthology is a special book. You know, special mm -hmm. anthology is coming out. So, uh, uh, all people who have participated, the main idea is those who have participated, you know, they, they are the ones who are contributing this book. So, I begin by thanking... Amita Sangvi, a chief guest for this evening. So despite many challenges and problems, she could still make it. And thank you once again. Thanks for the beautiful uh, poem and your lovely book, which you have uh, sort of shared with us. Lovita Jair Morang, it was so sad that we missed your flute. I know I've heard you before. You're an excellent, you know, instrumentalist, flutist also, and you... She's, by the way, she plays many musical instruments. She sings. She's a multifaceted person. Uh, and uh, thanks for everything that you've done, from, from a paper to your poem to your, you know, the music that you presented for us. And of course, uh, please send the YouTube link and I'll share yes. it with people here. I will. Nondita De, guest Thank of you. Her. You know, thank you again for the uh, lovely paper, erudite paper that you presented and your poem. Thank you very much. Sharmani Chakraborty, oh, you are quite a surprise package and thank you again for the beautiful yes. paper and such an imaginative, uh, you know, uh, take on Charulata's letter. Oh, wonderful. Loved it. Loved it to bits. And uh, love your poem also. Uh, Shraddha Gupta, thanks a lot for participating with us. From for your paper to your poem and your Bangla song, which I feel is 98.5%, I would give you. So beautiful. You have such a melodious voice. And I would like some of you to be a part of the physical meet going forward. And of course, thanks are due to Monica Ajaykal. She is my dear sister for many years now. And, uh, you know, she has held, the, yes. held today's evening beautifully. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And with this, we can say final round of goodbyes to each other and good nights to each other before I'll shut the thing and, you know, we'll, we'll end with the recording also. So Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.